thank you for joining us. We yeah, appreciate pleasure. it. Yeah. It's much more fun than in a fluorescent hallway in a convention center. It's very fluorescent. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I want to go back a little bit and just talk about the first time. Our history. Yay! Our history, yeah. Um, we were over in our little studio on Beeman, not where we are now. And the project was this, the... I, I mean, I know what it's, the story was, but... It, it was an anthology. Yeah, an uh, anthology of Asimov stories. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was the uh, Asimov's magazine. Right. Uh, and we had done, I guess, uh, a bunch of stories from it as an anthology. Yeah. Right. And so that was the first time that your writing came across my desk. Yeah. And... And mine. And I was just friggin blown away. Um, oh, thank you. I went in the booth and I read it and I didn't stumble. I didn't falter. It was like, it was just like swimming in happiness. Um, oh, thank you. Uh, you know, it, it appealed to all my past theater life <laughs> right? because it, it allowed a performance. Right. It's a, it's a, it's a, one of my favorite stories. It's a Christmas story. So it doesn't get any traction because, uh, you know, oh, it's, it's, it, it, people don't take it seriously. I think it's a very serious story. It's a, it's one of my funniest stories and you did a great job in selling the funny. I think all of your funniest stuff is your most serious actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. I think we'll, we'll get to that. I think, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, it was really quite a pleasure to hear you because here's the deal, you know, as, as you know, uh, and as our listeners will soon know, I do a lot of uh, narration myself. And I mean, I like to think I'm okay, but one of the problems is when you have a first person female narrator, uh, you know, no matter how good a guy you are, you really can't sell that the way a woman sells it. So, and I remember when I heard that, I, list, I was jogging and I, I, I just remember laughing out loud in the middle of the street saying, holy smokes, does she get this story? And um, so anyway, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, it, it occurs to me that uh, to ask who owns the right to that story, I guess it's still up on Audible, but I'd really like to, I'd like to give that story to people because you did such a great job. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to make the movie out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And when I approached you, you were so gracious. And still, it's still on my bucket list. I still think it's a short film. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Christmas. I remember that. Oh, yeah. my gosh. It'd be great. Anyway, so that's how I first fell in love with you. <laughs> and I've since then done a couple of stories of yours uh, for Lightspeed Magazine. Right. We've been doing the podcast for them for, I don't right. know, almost right. years now. Right. And uh, that's been fun. Right. Um, uh, specifically breakaway breakdown and uh, right it was uh, miss nobody never was that yeah. was the the other one I was just listening to that one again uh, it's got this uh, bartender thing go going on that I simply love There's there's something that you do when you write characters um, they are absolutely authentic yeah. in whatever world you place them. Oh, thank you. And uh, I, I was reminded of that, mm -hmm. uh, listening to that. Well, I thought you did a, a fantastic job there. Now, this is a story about a bartender who is sober, and he's more or less set, but he is having his past sins come back to haunt him. And that, that whole grizzled, I've been around the block, kid. I've, I've seen it all. I've been in this bar forever. And, and you know, you, you can't fool me. But all of a sudden, he's getting something that's really strange. But I thought you, you know, that, that whole, the story wants to be grounded in the character because what's happening around him is, is really weird. Um, and he stays grounded because you stayed grounded in your narration. I thought that was really, and, and, and let's not to put, find a point on it. This is not a story necessarily that a younger narrator could do as well a job as a man of a certain age. Yes. <laughs> I think, which is very close to my own age. So. You, you have to be at least 35. Yeah, I think so. I think, I think so, yeah. <laughs> anyway, and then Breakaway Back Down, of course, that was like, I mean, that was full theater world. And you did do theater ad adaptation of that, didn't you? I had that, 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 
piece has been adapted in several different forms. It was an audio play. This is a story about a, a, a woman who's, who's just wanted to become an astronaut and has come back from space because living in space is basically going to kill you about 40 years sooner than uh, it would if you stayed on Earth. And so she was looking for the thrill and the prestige and the glamour of space and back down. He, she was trying to break away to space, but she backed down. So it has been a story. In the story form, it is in the form of a telephone, like a telephone conversation. You only hear one side of the conversation, and it is left to the reader to intuit what the other character is saying. When it was uh, <laughs> produced as a play, two, two different ways. One time as an audio play, I had to write the dialogue for the for the uh, for the oh, other, the other part. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah. So yeah, and well, and so I had to for that was for the audio play. Then of course. Some guy decided to spend his own money to make a short film, and so he had to, she had to ha he had to hire an actress. But in one of the um, in one of the plays, the actual stage plays, um, the actor just came and talked to the audience, and the audience yeah, didn't, yeah. Didn't knew that uh, that the, the character is talking to, and that that's worked very well. Uh, you know, it's a very it, it's a very poignant play. There is a case to be made, I think that I am sometimes a sentimentalist. I think it's also, uh, the, I veer close to sentiment, but I sort of pull back from it. But that's a very sentimental story. And you're reading of the sentimental, sad ending. It just breaks me up every time I hear it, so. Yeah, I, I remember, you know, just loving the device of hearing just the one side mm -hmm. of it. Right, yep. But then also, you know, okay, you know, really filling in what I was hearing. I remember those glorious, and of course, different genre, but, um, you know, Bob Newhart doing those phone calls. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. He knew who was on the line and what they were saying. Huge Bob Newhart fan, and yeah, I totally, you know, I'm totally behind that whole, those radio, those radio, those uh, LPs where he was doing those, yeah. those bits, really good stuff. Yeah, anyway, so let's bring, let's bring, let's fast forward a little bit to last year in Dublin, yeah. saw you, and tell us a little bit about what you were cooking then. Well, I had uh, sold this uh, novella uh, to Subterranean Press, and I was very happy to make the sale. They make a beautiful book. It's uh, but the books that they print are collector's items, and so mm -hmm. this is a uh, twenty-two thousand word novella, and it's going to go for forty bucks. Now it's a very beautiful book but it isn't pocket change for a lot of people. I'm very proud of this book. Um, now they are doing an ebook, and so that's five bucks, that's fine. Sure. But, um, you know, to me, this was a story uh, that wanted to be read. And so I approached you guys, and I had this crazy idea that uh, unlike mostly uh, the, the perceived wisdom is that you know, you put your book out there, you see if some audio company will record it and, and, uh, and they'll pay you. Um, but they, <laughs> yeah, also, <laughs> they also will control the use of the, of the audio. And, and I thought I had wanted to, uh, to control the use of this audio because back up just a little bit, um, when podcasting first started, I was one of the first science fiction podcasters who was also like a, a you know, a, a, a well-known uh, science fiction writer to start doing this and giving my podcast away for free. And um, in 2005, I wrote a novella uh, for a small press and I was worried about who would see it. So I recorded that book, Burn, and gave it away. Right. And in the dawn of podcasting, 20,000 people downloaded it. Um, oh, well. and, wow. um, and because, and I, I talked my publisher into letting me do a chapter a week for 14 weeks on the theory that, well, if people really want to buy the book, they'll buy it. And then by the time 14 weeks pass, that book got nominated for the Nebula totally, totally, in my opinion, on the basis of those downloads. And so, uh, so it occurred to me to try to do that again. It's a different audio book uh, environment now. Uh, and so I had to come up with a different plan. Um, I could have done it myself. Um, Why not? And, yeah. And I, I really, you know, I got to thinking about our collaborations and I wanted to hand this off to somebody who would, would do a, a, a good job of it, obviously, but also who would, um, who would 
uh, convince people who are saying, oh, the author just read it. What does the author know how to read? <laughs> <laughs> a, a pro who, who has the gravitas and also the reputation to, to, to do this book. Um, and also as a sense of, of fun, which I think this is a, as we were just saying, this is a book that has a, a lot of humor in it and it has a lot of fun in it, but it also needs to be taken seriously because underneath it is a very serious yeah. uh, story. And so um, I was looking at the guy at this convention. I wandered around the dealer's room. There's just the guy I want. And he's sitting next to, this to the woman who's done so well for me. So uh, I approached you and you guys said yes. And I'm so happy. It was really cool to see you because you 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 suddenly just emerged from the crowd. It was it was like it was, it was parting of the Dublin out, city. Out, out of the Dublin fog, right? right. Um, yeah. And and then you came around to our side of the table instead of staying on the yeah, yeah. the uh, consumer side, <laughs> and you sat down in a chair and said. Okay, I want to talk about something. <laughs> and I, I like, thought, uh-oh, what did we do now? <laughs> what the heck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when we, when we all flew back and came home and, and read it, because we were considering how best to treat it. And that's right. something that we, in this day and age, we still look at each book sure. individually and yep. try to bring our... Separate well, yeah. backgrounds when, to how to when, how when to we first it. talked about it in Dublin, we hadn't seen the book, of course. Sure. Right. Ideas, we talked about all kinds of approaches, right? Uh, but uh, until we actually read the book and said, "Whoa, this is what this is," yeah, uh, only one approach, really right? Because we thought, sense. you know, not no, not having read it from the title, you know, "King of the Dogs, Queen of the Cats," it was yeah. like. Ooh, Great, I'm the cat, he's the dog. Right, yeah, exactly. But we, we both kind of go in our corners and, and read something and then come back and say, okay, what, what do you think, you know? Right. And I, I felt it was, it was a, a one-person bravura performance. I thought so, too. You know, uh, what I was, I'm a big fan of, of you know, many voices in audio, uh, although I just listened to a book um, by Ross McDonald, I believe it was, that was, it's a, it's a PI, it's a Lou Archer book, and it's, mm -hmm. uh, Ed Asner is the main guy, but they hired in a cast of a bunch of other people, and it just threw me off my spin, like, wait a minute, who's talking now? Uh, it, it, it really needs, it, it's a theatrical uh, deal, and you need, I think, uh, strong direction, you need strong actors, yeah, and, no and not everything gets, you know, can can for one thing or nothing it's a short book mine is a short book and so uh you know what i i don't know i mean this is one of the, the secrets i mean i have I, I i've done one of my own novels but basically novellas as long as i go and i think it's really hard for a solo performer to sort of remember all the voices and stuff like that which is one of the reasons why i didn't want to do this is that I know my voices travel over the course of a, of a recording. I know that I'm not doing the same guy, you know, at the end as I was three days ago when I started. And so, and, and that's the thing that, you know, I, I feel that the, the, you guys, you pros. I'm not sure that anybody who's a real actor does the same voice because the circumstances in the book. Sure. And if you're, if you're, narrating performing a real character a real person right. to yourself and to your right. listeners right there are changes that happen right uh, and and those need to be honored as well there's a thing that you did in in the book um so one of our one of our characters is a cat and when the cat first appears the cat has sort of a sly intonation but it turns out the cat is a secret agent and at one point he is revealed to be an ambassador and when our hero sees the cat as an ambassador. He has an entirely different sort of, you know, upscale, posh kind of voice, as opposed to this, you know, I, I'm even going to do your voice. But I thought, that's right. That's absolutely right. That, I wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah, it's fun. It's, it's fun stuff because it all gets filtered through your responsibility as a storyteller. Right as the narrator, as the storyteller, and that, that old thing of supporting the writing but not getting in the way. Right. 
that's a fine line, right. you know. And like with the other stories we were talking about, the story itself is character based. Right. So in this case, multi character based. I mean, we we have the the central POV. We have Geo, who's the who's the raisiner. He's 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 our every man who who travels through this crazy world. But it's not just about him. It's about no. these other people, and and I use that uh, that term advisedly uh, right. as well. Um, and that's part of the fun of it too, because they're all different. Their perspectives are different. Uh, yeah. And they're funny, and they enjoy each other. And interestingly enough, they're also involved in politics. Right. I felt <laughs> gave the whole thing an extra, uh, just extra juice. <laughs> right. Yeah. I mean, there's a, there's always the problem when you have talking cats and dogs. Oh, it's so cute. Mm -hmm. And and so one of the things you're supposed to do as a writer when somebody you think you know what a critique of your story is. You sort of disarm it in the in the story. So at one point, the the cats and dogs are complaining that when they do their show, the humans are going to think, "Oh, don't take them seriously because they're cute." And by at that point, we're ready to invest in these characters. As yeah, we're maybe you think it's cute, but we think this is serious politics, and maybe our future is at stake here. So that was uh, yeah, that was one of the ideas. I loved reading your your. Um your blog on your website about how this came about, you know, you, the cat videos on YouTube and the dogs. Yeah, and, right. And so you're a cat person, right? I am a cat person. And so, well, so this is one of the things. So I workshop this story and uh, I, I actually get allergic to dogs. My, my son has a dog. My, my, my son, my, my son and my daughter, each family has a dog. My daughter's family has two dogs and I go down there. It's like, Oh, please don't go away. And they, they're all jumping on you and stuff like that. As I, <laughs> as I was writing this, well, as, as I was workshopping this, the workshop comment said, well, obviously you must prefer dogs to cats because I think I cut the dogs more slack in slack. This than, than the cats. And I spent more time doing research about dog psychology and dog smell and what dogs can see. And so, I mean, I got into it. As long as I didn't have to be in the room with them, these are imaginary dogs. I'm fine with those. <laughs> <laughs> but your statistics were so interesting about the percentages of cats that slept on the bed as opposed to the dogs. Right, right. It was well, great. I, it was... I mean, the whole thing, actually, as, 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 you, as you say, I, was, I write a column for Asimov Science Fiction Magazine. And so, you know, wh why are all these cat videos on so I wrote I started to write a funny column and then then I got into the psychology of it and also the statistics of it so uh, in fact the internet is a cat medium I did a search on Google and said that's dogs and cats and so dogs came up with 1.9 billion hits and cats came up with 2.3 billion hits yeah um, wow. it turns out that there are more dogs there are more cats than dogs in this country, right. but there are more uh, dog owners and cat owners because cat owners generally have more than one cat. And I have two, Thelma and Louise. And so, um, okay. that makes sense, yeah. so yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, but, but the other thing is, is that, so it's a, if this is a popular thing, what can I do with it? Um, and so I was thinking, okay, and then, of course, a great inspiration to me uh, is a, a writer of, of, I've always been a big fan of Cordwainer Smith. And he wrote a whole universe filled with uplifted animals. Yeah. But uh, uplifted, uh, one of those famous ones is a, is a story called The Bout of Lost C. Mel, or Camel, however you say it, C apostrophe M-E-L. Uh -huh. And it's a story about an uplifted cat and her doomed love for a human but it's a you know it isn't cute at all it's tragic it's right. romeo and juliet it's 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 and so um i thought well okay i can i can you know tap into this great interest in these pets but also be serious about it and and make a political point um by not uplifting these animals quite to human level so there would be a built-in uh, cultural uh, reason for them to be servants, but I know they're smart enough 
to, to have feelings and to, to suss things out. And plus, the, the, the smartest dogs and the smartest cats are smarter than the average human. Maybe the average dog and cat aren't quite as... So there, what does this do in a society where there's this disparity between opportunity for people, animal people, but people who are, who are smart enough to, to, to make up their own uh, way through life? Right. That's brilliant. That's really, it's really brilliant. Thanks. Nice stuff. Okay. Yeah. What else? Well, um, we're, this, this audio book is now kind of out there. And, it's real. Uh, it is <laughs> real. Is. Um, and uh, you've got a special plan for it. I do. Yeah, what is so, your plan? So my plan is, so a unintended, unintended consequence of something I started doing years ago, inspired, by the way, by my friend uh, Bruce Sterling, and my older, my, my, uh, Bruce is in my generation, but in a generation after us was Cory Doctorow, of giving things away for free um, <laughs> as a Creative Commons kind of license. And so, um, but one of the unintended consequences of that, so there's lots of free stuff on my website. If you go to jimkelly.net, you can listen to, you, uh, you know, stuff that is in light speed, uh, but basically text that I just po posted five or six, seven stories. You can, you can read them, you can listen to them. When I started out, being published meant being published in print. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only way to see a story would be to buy the magazine or buy the book it was in, uh, and that was it. And that was published. That was easy to understand what being published meant. Yeah. Um, as the internet has uh, expanded and we have trained our audience to expect uh, something for free, um, being published isn't the same as it was unless there's some free aspect to it. So um, uh, there's a, there's a, a, a well-known uh, website called Tor.com. They give away massive amounts of wonderful fiction, but no audio. You have to buy the audio. Got it. Okay. I'm sort of doing the reverse thing here. I'm uh, letting uh, Subterranean, who is totally down with this idea, uh, sell the print copies and the ebook copies. But, and I think uh, Bill Schaefer recognizes that this is a thing that for a story to get traction these days, it has to have accessibility. And so this is my play for accessibility. Um, you know, it doesn't hurt that, you know, maybe there's some goodwill uh, involved here, but it's mostly just so people will listen and, and hear the story. Because if it's behind a paywall, if it's, if it's you know, in a bookshelf in a place where there's no readers, then it isn't, it, in some ways it doesn't, if a tree, if a book falls in the library, oh. nobody picks it up. <laughs> Did I just say that? I think I did. That's you know, it doesn't exist. And so this is a way for my story to exist. And so my plan is to give it away for free for, um, for some period of time. Um, let it have its moment in the sun. Let it find as big an audience as it possibly can. And then pull it back. But, you know, once the toothpaste is out of this tube, once it's out there for free, it stays out. People can send it okay. to other people for free but i will pull it back at some point and not make it widely available you'll have to know someone to get one um and and so then at that point um uh it will be for the audiobook will be for sale and one of the advantages of this i think is that uh blackstone audio you guys did a great job of recording it blackstone audio made a very nice cover for it and it will exist in their um in their store Yep. For a long time after maybe people will forget, but with their people, strong library you know, presence, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and that, that's sort of my strategy. Now, is that crazy? I don't know. Uh, am I going to earn, you know, more money for this probably than I would have otherwise if I had just held everything back? No, probably not. But am I going to be a happier writer with a bigger audience? I'd like to think so, and I'd like to think that people who support me who have followed me will be happy. And I'd like to think that maybe some people who wouldn't have seen me or just you know, read my stuff, but heard this guy's giving this stuff away. Well, let's go see how good it is. And then, then I, my, my ace in the hole is you guys are so good. that <laughs> even if the story sucked, it's going to sound good. Well, no. plus we, we share your, what you just expressed, your yeah. 
mentality about putting it out there. Yeah, we've yeah. we've had some wonderful support through Kickstarter, through Drip, right. um, and these people who have supported our work know how we feel yeah. about good and quality work. Right, and we're going to share that with your permission with them. That'd be great. I'm I'm so I'm I'm so happy to have your audience join and become yeah. at least for this book Absolutely. part of because, my audience. Yeah. Uh, they merge at a certain point and right. uh, and they talk to each other. Yep. And <laughs> what happens is that they tell their friends and then suddenly you're operating at uh, at the original form of promotions which is word of mouth. Right. Sure. Okay. Right. Hey, listen to what I just heard. Right. Hey, read what I just read. Right. This is terrific and that there's no substitute for that. And I've yeah. always found that a lot of the people who listen to our work on Lightspeed, which is free to some extent, sure. yeah. are the ones that come up to the table and buy out the table. Yeah. There you go. You know, because they've heard it, they know it. Um, it's it's not an issue of, well, I got something for free. <laughs> no, I think that's true. I like mean, this, you know. I mean, let's, let's face it, there's a lot of stuff for free on the internet. And so one of the things that sets, you know, a, a book like this apart, aside from the fact that I work very hard on it and you work very hard on it, is you're not going to waste their time. You know, whatever they think of it, they know that people put their hearts into this. And people who knew what they were doing put their hearts into yes. it. Yes. So. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I think that covers just about everything Excellent. we wanted to do. We are yeah. so grateful that you took yeah. this time out yeah. of your your evening to talk to us a little bit. Yep. We send this out as a sort of a Valentine's Day gift at the end of the week. Excellent. And, uh, we're excited about it. I am too. And you know, I, 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 it was a kind of a dream to have this happen. When I sat down at your table, I thought, these guys are going to laugh me off. The, I mean, they'll be very polite because they're nice people, but they're going to say, <laughs> you've got to be kidding me. And so, and, and, and this whole idea of giving it away for free, well, how's that going to work? And you guys came up like, with yeah. part of this plan. <laughs> <laughs> woof, woof. <laughs> so anyway, I want to thank you too. It's, it's been, I mean, this is not the last time we're working together. I no. bow it. Yeah. <laughs> No, absolutely not. Okay, you take good care. Okay, right. best of luck to all, all of us and have a great yep. year and happy Valentine. Yes. Yep. Yes. <laughs> Bye -bye. Be well. Thank you.